Hi, my name is Eva Bungard. I'm talking to you from DTU Energy at the Risø campus in Denmark. And I'd like to talk to you about a large screening we did of uh, polymer materials for polymer solar cells. First of all, I'd like to show you um, what kind of polymer solar cells we're doing here at Risø. We start up with uh, coating the active layer which consists of a fullerene acceptor and a polymer donor. Uh, we coat this on a flexible flex trode, which consists of a um, back uh, of a front uh, silver grid, a peter PSS layer, and a zinc oxide layer. On this, we coat the slot die coat the active layer, uh, which you can see in the first picture. Uh, on top of this, we slot die code again a, p a layer of P dot PSS, and finally we c uh, conclude the uh, the polymer solar cell uh, with a fr uh, a back electrode of the silver uh, print, which you can see in the other two uh, pictures. So what have we focusing on? In the field of polymer solar cells, we are now focusing on efficiency, fabrication and stability. Uh, many materials have been tested during the past uh, 10 years, uh, but it's not able to uh, compare these, uh, and we have shown this through round robins. So one material tested in one lab cannot be compared to another material tested in another lab. Many of the materials uh, which have high uh, uh, PCE, uh, high efficiency, uh, up to more than 10%, uh, has been published. Um, also have a small uh, device area uh, down to one square millimeters, and they're coated, uh, spin coated on uh, angium tin oxide and in an inert atmosphere. And these are conditions which are not comparable with the large-scale fabrication which we want. So we want a material that fulfills all, which give high efficiency, which is stable, and which uh, is able to be fabricated in large-scale. So what we need now is a study of many polymers under the same conditions, uh, which fulfill these important criteria. Uh, this can lead to uh, uh, lead candidates and we can then optimize these lead candidates. So the criteria which the polymer needs to fulfill is that they need to have a high PCE. This can be achieved by having a low band gap, low HOMO level and high molecular weight. They also need to be stable and for the polymer this means that they need to have a high photochemical stability. They also need to be fabricated in large scale and for the uh, slot die coating that we're using here, they, it, this means that they need to be soluble, uh, meaning that we need to have uh, side chains that makes the polymer soluble. Then we also need to focus on the synthesis. So we need to have few synthetic steps, high yield, and we need to look at the toxicity of the, of the polymer uh, synthesis. So we start up with looking at these alternating donor and acceptor polymers. Um, we want to include the acceptor monomer into the donor uh, polymer backbone. Uh, since it has been shown that when you uh, add these acceptor units, uh, you decrease the band gap and increase the efficiency. Uh, since you are um, absorbing uh, photons at a longer wavelength. So we uh, started up with these eight uh, monomer donors. Uh, which are shown here, um, and these 13 uh, monomer acceptors, which are shown here. 
and we combine these into a matrix where all the uh, acceptor units are combined with all the donor units and we ended up with 104 polymers in total. The synthesis of the polymers uh, were carried out through a Stille or a Suzuki cross-coupling polymerization using palladium as a catalyst um, where we either used the tin derivate of the donor monomer or the boron uh, derivate, uh, boron ester derivate of the monomer. When we have uh, polymerized all these uh, 104 polymers, we characterize them using size exclusion chromatography to determine the molecular weight distribution. Uh, UVVIS to determine the absorption and the optical band gap. We also did a cyclic voltammetry to determine the HOMO and LUMO levels, home mobility to determine the transport in the polymer, and the photochemical stability to see if the polymer was uh, efficient, uh, stable to be used in polymer soil cells. And finally, we characterized uh, the polymers in uh, by using them in polymer solar cells uh, as the active uh, donor material and uh, found the PCE, the open circuit voltage, the short circuit current and the fill factor for each polymer. As you can see here, we were able to prepare polymers with different uh, uh, open circuit voltage, a wide range of band gap and also uh, a wide range of uh, HOMO levels. But all the data uh, was not simple to look over, so we uh, combined it all in a merit factor, uh, where we uh, used the PCE of the solar cell, the sta photochemical stability, the open circuit voltage and the band gap in nanometers and also included the number of synthetic steps. We then uh, calculated this merit factor for all the polymers and compared it in with the merit factor of the P3HT. And this got us this uh, relative merit factor where we uh, have how much better the polymer is than P3HT under these conditions. And we found that 14 lead candidates shown here had either a higher PCE, a very good photochemical stability, few synthetic steps, a high VOC, or a lower band gap than when we compared it to P3HT. And we can see that a lot of the polymers are based on the D7 polymer, uh, monomer, uh, the D2, or the benzothiodiazole, the A1. A lot of the polymers also failed uh, during the testing or uh, characterization. Um, either by having a low PCE in the polymer solar cells, and this can be um, studied more if we uh, change the ratio between the polymer and the PCBM, or if we use a different acceptor than the PCBM, for instance the P71. PCBM. Um, also, the the some of the polymers were not even able to prepare efficient solar cells, uh, and this was uh, mainly due to de-wetting, shunts, and switching. And here we can look at the device structure, and perhaps also the uh, thickness of the active layer. And some of the polymers was uh, not even uh, prepared into a polymer, uh, mainly due to steric hindrance and low molecular weight. And some of the polymers were not soluble. And here we have to look at the side chains. So out of the 14 lead candidates, we choose, chose one lead candidate and studied this further the A1-D7. 
Here we wanted to study the side chain manipulation, so we wanted to see what nature the side chain had, and we wanted to see which, uh, where the side chain was efficiently uh, attached. And we synthesized these eight polymers, where the six of them had uh, side chains in different places. Um, uh, either on the thiathine, on the benzene, or the benzothiodiazole. And they also had either branched uh, the hexyl desyl uh, chain or straight chain, uh, the C12 dodecyl chain. The P7 and P8 were different polymers by adding uh, two uh, more uh, thiathines or by adding the to fluorine attached to the benzothiodiazole. And we can see here that the alkyl side chains on the thiathine gave a disordered backbone, um, meaning that it gives a lower conjugation length and thus a higher band gap for the P2, P4 and P6. If an additional thiathine, like for the P8, is used, where the side chain is also on a thiophene, this trend is not seen. And when we applied them in the polymer solar cells, we found that the alkyl side chains on the thiophene gave a very poor uh, polymer solar cells, the P2, P4 and P6. Um, for the P1, it was a little bit better, with the alkoxy side chains on the benzothiodiazole. The P3 uh, gave a low solubility uh, and low molecular weight, and thus the very low uh, a PCE. And to conclude, the P5 gave uh, the highest uh, efficiency, where the OHD side chains are on the benzene uh, the uh, monomer. So the P5 was uh, concluded to be the optimum, uh, the optimum uh, polymer uh, side chains. But also P7 and P8 uh, gave uh, efficiencies. Uh, so these, uh, which are uh, high, and these polymers are uh, some which we need to look further into. We also wanted to study the polymer uh, stability. The thermal stability has been shown to uh, be increased when we add this uh, ethyl uh, phenyl side chain uh, on PPV uh, based polymers. And thus we did this on the A1D7 since this is a lead candidate for the um, spin, uh, for the roll coated uh, polymer solar cells. And as we can see, the, the efficiency does not change that much when we include this uh, ethyl uh, phenyl. However, the, the stability is the same for when we did the ISIS light testing and the thermal stability and the photochemical stability. So we do not see an improvement uh, when we add this, uh, polymer, uh, this side chain to the polymer. We did, however, also do this uh, test uh, on A1, A2D2 from the uh, previous uh, Solar 100 uh, study and found that, that uh, we had some uh, promising results for this. We then looked into the synthesis of A1D7. And as you know, we did the still cross-coupling polymerization for this polymer when we did the large screening. So we used a pal palladium catalyzed uh, polymerization, which gives a high molecular weight since the, we're using the tin uh, derivate of the donor. Uh, we also get uh, toxic uh, byproducts. Now, if we look at the direct aerylation polymerization, we do not use this uh, toxic uh, tin uh, 
and therefore we don't get toxic uh, byproducts. It's still palladium catalyzed. However, since it's not directed, um, we uh, get defects, especially when the thiothene uh, is used. It can react in position three or four. And this uh, causes uh, a lower molecular weight or can cause a lower molecular weight. So we wanted to study this uh, uh, to see if we could optimize um, the synthesis for the A1 D7. And as you can see here, we when we use the Stille uh, cross-coupling polymerization, we get uh, six steps uh, to synthesize uh, one monomer which is uh, difficult uh, to purify and which is toxic. Or we, if we switch it around, uh, we get three steps plus three steps, but one is still toxic. When we use the DARP, we get four steps for the one monomer, but th this is still uh, very difficult to purify. And finally, we get uh, the one where we only have three steps as maximum to prepare the monomer. So in total we have seven steps uh, for the stille, uh, which are uh, toxic, and one is also difficult to purify. And for the DARP we have five, where one monomer is difficult to purify, and one with strategy with uh, four steps. Uh, where both monomers are easy to purify. So we did uh, this DARP testing with 10 different conditions and we found one where uh, we did not have any defects and by applying this in polymer solar cells we found that this entry uh, gave as high uh, PCE as the Stille prepared um, polymer. And this entry was the one with the four-step synthesis. So in conclusion, uh, I've showed you the Solar 100 where we found 14 lead candidates out of 104 uh, polymers, uh, which we need to optimize further for, uh, for polymer solar cells. Most of the failures uh, were in the device by where the um, polymers were de-wetting or sh making shunts or switching. Uh, we then did a side chain manipulation on the A1 D7 and uh, studied the size of the uh, side chain, if it should be straight or branched and where it should be attached and found that the A1 D7 was actually the optimum polymer. Uh, configuration. And we also studied this polymer with the stability and found that there was no improvement by adding the ethyl phenyl uh, side chain group. We then studied the same polymer uh, in using the dark conditions, both for the small molecules uh, to prepare the monomer and we found a low defect strategy and also a high PCE uh, strategy was found. All the results I have uh, discussed here are published in the, these four uh, papers. And finally, I'd like to acknowledge the solar cell group here at Risø and the Willem Fonden for uh, financial support and you for your attention.